Interesting. Um, the last thing I have to say, Father, is the kittens, frankincense and myrrh. Yeah. I think you really should have gone with frankincense and purr. But, you know, <laughs> me. <laughs> me. That's Hi, everyone, and welcome to Royal Path. I'm your host, Andrew, and I'm here to ask Cyprian and Father, what is your least favorite household chore? What is something that, like, every time you do it, you're just like, oh, boy, because I, I know mine is folding and putting away laundry. Mm. I hate folding and putting away laundry. I'll take out the garbage. I'll do dishes. I'll sweep. I'll vacuum. All that stuff is fine, but folding and putting away laundry every time... It's just like the worst. There's just a sigh of contrition and gentle weeping to myself as I have to do this unfortunate task. I think it's probably mopping for me. It's probably mopping. Like, yeah. Just mo like mopping the floor. Sure. That's like, that's, I think because I actually don't mind chores. If I have the time, I don't mind them. I get into like a nice headspace about it. Like folding is great for me because i can just like sort of just go to another place and i've got my hands doing something same with washing the dishes washing like the washing dishes, dishes can be very very relaxing like but dishes. mopping the whole process it's just it's too broken up i can never really get into a headspace it's i'm definitely like can't find a rhythm it's tedious to me it's a tedious thing but luckily my wife does most of the floor cleaning i do it on occasion i'd actually rather clean the bathroom like, and we have a big stone shower and everything. I'd rather do all of that than mop the floor. Mm. Yeah. 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 I like doing dishes. I like most household chores. I can get into them. Yeah, Saint okay. Seraphim of Sarov says you your house should be breezy and light and clean. Mm -hmm. And I like getting my house to that spot where it's mm -hmm. like, if I feel, I feel good walking around it. Like as I've gotten older, mess bothers me more and more. Um, what about you, Father? Mm, I think, uh, I think the toilet. The toilet. <laughs> That's a rough one. It's rough. Mm -hmm. my, 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 I work at Outreach Center, and boy, that bathroom. It just, you get like the dudes on like a three-day meth binge that like come in and use that bathroom. And like people wearing adult diapers it's like oh boy i just have to remember when saint nectarios when he um in the school in the school had to become the janitor for a little while to keep that dude's job and i'm just like okay well this is that so anyway but yeah i so this is the last thing i'll say why i don't like folding is like i don't i have this thing about um like cotton rubbing together it like really bothers me. I can't, I can't like really touch cotton balls or anything like that. It really bothers me. It's like the, the sound and the feeling and everything. And so a lot of times clothes, when they come out, they feel really weird to me and I don't like doing it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just, it's not, but I like doing dishes, like dishes, put some music on, put a podcast on something. It's lovely. I love it. I can really get into it. So anyway, that killed like seven or eight minutes. So we are, I picked the topic for tonight because I actually thought that it would be beneficial because it's the last recording. Oh, by the way, do you guys know we've been doing this for a year? It was a year like a month ago. No. Oh. Yeah. Happy anniversary. But, it's, but, but we're not on 52 episodes, though. Yeah, but we're on like 44, 45 or something. No, I think we're on 49. So that yeah. is like a fantastic hit rate for three men who are as busy as we are, especially father especially father that we are able to miss like i would honestly say we probably missed like six or seven or something like that i don't know mm -hmm. because it was like a month ago that it was the anniversary or something like that mm -hmm. at least when the the first video was uploaded mm -hmm. so hey 
we've been doing this for a year. I think we've gotten better. So, oh, for sure. Um, so the topic tonight, I thought that we could discuss, and I think it'll branch off into other things because I don't have a ton of research that I did into this, but I kind of wanted to bounce what I found out about Halloween, about, um, I guess like the cultural or not the cultural, but well, I guess some of that, but the spiritual significance of it. Um, and the thing that I wanted to point out right away, and this is not the Andrew show. So I'm going to try and keep this to a, a tight five. Um, but what I found when researching was the people who were defend the Orthodox, specifically the Orthodox people who were defending Halloween. And I'm not going to name names, <laughs> but um, uh, the specific Orthodox people that so I found a church and don't go looking for it. But I found a church where the priest basically did this whole thing uh like uh wrote this whole letter like basically like bashing orthodox christians who think halloween is evil he's basically saying like oh yeah you know like using all these intellectual reasons why like it's not what people think it is and like oh whoa i let my kids go trick-or-treating i guess i'm a heretic and all this different stuff at the top of the page was the link to stream because they had shut down for COVID. i'm just saying so, you know, there's that, there's this whole thing. And like, by the way, they have pews in the church, lots and lots of pews and not a lot of icons, not a lot of icons, just a couple. It looks very Western. You shall know them by their fruits. Exactly. Exactly. And there's a couple other people that I saw wrote some very well worded, very intellectual articles on that. There's nothing wrong with Halloween. And there's all these roots having to do with Orthodox Christian services and early Christian churches and stuff like that. Again, proudly praising people who were getting the vaccine and, you know, uh, also were like taking the proper precautions, quote unquote, blah, blah, blah. And again, it's just like, I see, I'm seeing a correlation here, not all of them, but I saw some of them and that seemed to be the overriding. And then I saw some letters written by some modern day bishops and I don't know these guys from, I don't know anything about them, but even a broken clock, if they are whack, where is like, even if a if the broken clock is even right twice a day, blah, 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 blah. So um, one of the things that I found, and again, I know that this is not the Andrew show, so I'll, I'll try and keep this. So this is from Bishop Irene. Um, I believe he's Western, Western uh, Bishop Irene of London and Western Europe. And this is a letter to his mother, uh, to a mother and father, to a mother and father uh, regarding whether or not Orthodox Christians should participate in the secular activities associated with Halloween. And the part that's highlighted that I liked uh, was where secular people may feel that they have the option to divorce the spiritual realm from the physical and do one thing with their bodies while believing another thing in their minds. We Christian people do not. We know that the actions of our bodies and the things we do with our lives affect our hearts. And we are directly connected to the spiritual realm of which, uh, and we are directly connected to spiritual realms of which we are on account of our weakness, not always immediately aware. Um, can you honestly think you who gaze and touch holy icons in your home and in your temples and know that the saints are present with you, that you drawn into their holy lives to be willingly surrounded by images of the demons, however childish and infantile they represent. And that is, that's really important. I, I want to get back to that. However, childish and infantile, the representation will not affect your heart and your child's heart and draw them closer to powers that no one would call holy, not just to gaze upon such things, but to fashion them into clothes and costumes and wear them on one's body. Um, so I felt that that was really well said. I don't know. Um, right off the bat, I've got a little bit more, but what are your guys' uh, thoughts so far on, on that stuff? Well, uh, I think that there's a couple different layers to everything. Um, because am I am I falling into like an extreme here, Father? Uh, I don't know. I just I think we're just going to explore it, right? Because uh, you know, I I haven't really put any thought to it in this sense although i have thought about halloween a lot um i think i think it, let's just do it this way let me throw a couple things out 
and then we'll kind of chew on that to help kind of move it along, right? So like Halloween is a really high time of like occult activity. It, it just is. But at the same time, the occultic activity that's being done is kind of like low level hot topic occultic activity because the real stuff is like done around springtime like the real like heavy hitter stuff is done around springtime wicker man that type of situation and yeah. things that have to do with inversions of Pasca. sure so um so like that's that's something to kind of throw out there you know i think in like buffy the vampire slayer or something the demons and stuff like that wouldn't come out on Halloween because, like, it's so corny. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you could you could put like that. Uh, so I think that I think that's one thing. I think another thing too is like, um, what's really gold and what and what Bishop Irene said is, no matter how infantile the representation is, exactly. Seen, yeah. I think that's the kind of thing to think about, like. This gets us back to you know stuff we've talked about earlier, but um, well, maybe we talked about. It. I know I talked about it one time with um, DPH, but like there are just certain things like you can learn to get to to you can engender a taste for darkness in a soul. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's like and your so whole like, thing. Huh? That's like your whole thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is right. So, sure. like, so like the macabre and the in darkness. I mean, it's it's like a thing. And so, like on the one hand, just kind of being aware of it, and and I I think it's all fun and games until you actually start to try to live a spiritual life, and you're constantly plagued with despondency, or you're constantly plagued with you know, fear, or you're constantly plagued with certain things. And then like, you don't realize like, I don't understand why I can't, you know, you know, sloth or like all these things, like what's going on. And then, you know, uh, I, I wish I could find some kind of funny analogy, but I guess what I'm trying to get at is like, the whole time you're, you're like, I don't understand why I'm, why things are so dark around me. And then you go and you put on. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. I mean, essentially, yeah, you know, um, and then you eventually come to this point where it's like, yeah, no matter how much I love, you know, Chelsea Wolf or whatever, do I want to continue to engender what happens when, you know, her music does what it's supposed to do, when it invokes the feelings and the disposition that's supposed to invoke in me, um, and it's actually doing it, I can't like complain about it. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, you know, it's like the guy who's, you know, eating, do you know, ding dongs and ho-hos every day. And he's like, I understand why I'm getting fat. It's like, yeah. well, <laughs> uh, you know, so, I, so I think there's something, I think there's something to that, but I, I think this might be a real path moment in the sense that I think that there's a unique temptation to become like extreme in the overcorrection too. Cause like, I've been I was pretty extreme about Halloween for a long time with my kids, you know. Extreme in what sense? Just like super anti, you know what I mean? Okay. Just um and I'm still anti in the sense of like just just on the level of like I'm trying to break, I'm trying not to pass something on to my kids any more than it's already there. Right? I'm just being honest, you know. Sure. Um but at the same token, this is where things like fall festivals and just letting them dress up but just so like yeah you know dress up okay but just like why are you dressing up like a demon you know what i mean why are you dressing up like you know a mass murderer or like whatever you know what i mean pick a saint pick whatever you know and and i think for me that's where i'm trying to find some balance in 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 the phenomena because the reality of it is is like Okay, all all those things we're talking about, they're they're real and their impact to whatever greater lesser degree. At the end of the day, I don't want to like go 
and traumatize or give my kids some kind of weird hang up because of the like going to the other spectrum other other sure. spectrum does that make sense yeah well and i mean just on like an emotional level i can say that like um there's like a huge part of my recovery that was based around and ironically enough, if we went through a whole year so far without mentioning chelsea wolf i kudos to us because yeah. i know that father and i are both really really big fans of hers yeah. Cyprian, I don't know what your opinion is on it. Never don't know her. Don't know her. Apocalypse is his best album. What's it? Which is Apocalypse is her best album. I think so. That was the one I got the most into. Best album, yeah. I I agree. And most of the time, when you talk to people, it's abyss, 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 abyss. Wow. I think abyss is cool. It's cool. And I like it. It's good. And I and like beauty is good. You know what I mean? That's good. But Apocalypse, Apocalypse is, that that. that. Is, Moses, that oh my gosh! Wait, is that the name of the song? I think it's yeah. Moses yeah. is a song. Yeah. Too, yeah, that's a fan. And then I really even like his spun. Like after Abyss, like a lot of people was like, oh, it's kind of a weaker. I'm like, I still really like. Anyway, the point being is when I first started meeting with Father as my spiritual father, <laughs> I was reading a book and it's not well. Okay, it was Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace, and he was talking about the need for pain. And like in my recovery so far, it had been like, you know, like an abuse of PMA, like positive mental attitude, like stay up, you know, don't let, don't let the, the, the darkness get to you, blah, blah, blah. Always stay in like a, you know, a good mood, basically like some maybe more like kind of extreme Protestant Christians would, you know, would experience like always be up, be happy, you know, that kind of thing. And Chelsea Wolf was actually a huge component in me like letting myself get dark for a little while and like actually experiencing like depression and like not depression like a um feeling bad for myself but allowing myself to feel like hurt and dark and like being okay with like not flinching away from darkness like being allowing myself to be okay to go the ascent down um well i i think this brings up like so this brings up for me where I think that like when we speak about Halloween, that for me, at least I like, there's a separation of what it is that we're talking about. And I always want to be like, well, which Halloween are you talking about? Because I really do see there as being two Halloweens. There's the adult Halloween and there's the kid Halloween. Mm. Right. And, and that it, it has naturally just changed itself that to, to be that. And I think one of the things is the way I approach it is, this is a kid's holiday, right? For in me growing up and everything, like I always have fond memories of Halloween because my parents very much treated it as like, this is a kid's holiday. And like my brother and I, my brothers, my siblings and everybody around us, none of us ever really wanted to dress up as like, I think maybe one year my brother was a vampire, but it was like a really like corny vampire. You know what I mean? It was like cartoony. Nobody really, the kids, nobody really wanted to dress up as anything demonic or anything like that. It was like, let's be a karate guy and a Top Gun fighter pilot and a football player. And yeah. you know what I mean? These type of things. And the idea was, well, we're going to do these family activities. We're going to get a pump. We're going to go to the pumpkin patch and we're going to get a pumpkin. And that's great. And then we're going to carve the pumpkins together and then we're going to put them out there. And then one of my parents is going to walk us around the neighborhood with the other kids and then the other one is gonna um you know hand out candy and then and all the other kids are out and we're gonna walk with the kids and we're gonna get candy from and it was in some ways it was a way to see to meet the neighbors we lived in a suburb meet the neighbors see who was cool and who was not right like oh that house is off oh these people oh they gave something great sure. but but as it what was always given to me was this is, a, this is a time for kids. This is a kid's holiday and a thing where we're going to focus on the kids and everything. And when there were like teenagers, some of the people around me would be like, you're too old to be trick-or-treating. Stop dressing up. You know what I mean? The, the, the people, they'd be like, you don't get candy. You're too old for this. Go home. Right? And I think that what I saw over the years, right? So this, I'm talking about from the 80s when it was like, you could walk around all the houses, you know, so the, the 12 year olds that take the little kids, you know what I mean? To now where what's happened in culture, as far as I can see, is now it's become like an adult holiday. And the thing is for women to dress up in their like sexiest kind of 
you know, to be a sex slutty nurse or sure. sexy librarian or whatever. And it's like, that's, that's what, and so for me, it's like, again, it's like a fruits thing sort of to where I'm like, well, that's not trick or treating. They're not carving pumpkins, right? They want to go and do something. They, they, it's like a Mardi Gras type of thing. They want to go and do something debaucherous. And I'm like, that's a different thing happening to me. And that aspect seems to have gotten a lot bigger recently. Yes. And that's the one I have a problem with. So like, I don't really see, I see that these are not really both the same thing. Although probably at this point, they've crept it. The, the adult one has crept into the child one. Right. When the parents start putting on the costume outside of, oh, I'm going to put on a costume because it's for the kids that I'm going to be at the house and giving them candy. And I'm going to be dressed as a pirate because I'm participating in this thing. And all, but all I'm doing is giving them candy, you know, that's something different to me than I'm a, you know, 20 something year old person. And I'm looking forward to this so that I can go out and get blackout drunk and hook up with somebody in some kind of costume. To me, those are two totally different things. And that that adult one, there's a problem there. Like the demons are at work, clearly. Yeah. No doubt. I just, I'm like, are the demons at work in the one where the kid is like, I'm a ninja and I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm dressed as, like Doc. my daughter said, I want to be Lava Girl, right? And my other one's like, I want to be Bat Girl. Yeah. And then they're going to go and they're going to get candy in their little basket. To me, those are not the same two things happening. Yeah, I, I think though... That's a great observation. I think there's something that should be brought up, though, which a lot of people might miss this. Um, Because on top of the whole sexy aspect of it creeping in, I mean, Halloween changed in my lifetime, in our lifetime. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, I remember the first razor blades and candy apple scare. I remember that. I remember that it was never a thing, and then it was a thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I remember. I it's and it and it is the. I mean, I don't know if this is just hindsight. Someone may be like, actually, blah blah blah. I don't know, but it just feels like around the time of Ramirez, like, mm-hmm. yeah, things, things were things took a things started really taking a turn. Are you talking about like, Richard Ramirez? Yeah, Night Stalker. I mean, I, yeah, Night I mean, Stalker. I'm even thinking about like Halloween episodes of like chips and stuff like that, that were like explicitly like paranormal activity in them. You know what I mean? Just, just that was the opportunity for it to get like really dark. And, and it's just, it's interesting to me because it wasn't, maybe I just was, my parents kept me from it and I didn't realize it, but it just felt like, like there was a shift. There was a time it was like, no problem. There's a ship where it's like, there was a spirit about it was like it was fearful and there was like a real kind of like it was that satanic panic satanic it was R- panic. richard ramirez the the daycare centers the all of that stuff yeah I mean, there's there's uh, so I, you know i i think there's something to that and i think i mean just to be honest you know i'm really in becoming orthodox and then even over the last couple of years some of my consciousness in regards of like principalities and, and then working um, the kind of co-opting and the subverting of, of all saints day, you know what I mean? And the, the co-opting of the, of the, you know, quote unquote Catholic aspect of, of that time of year. I mean, I don't, I don't know about if, if this is going to be too much, if someone feels like I'm going to be grasping at something, but like, you know, All Saints Day is a pretty big day, man. I mean, there's more saints that are unknown than known. Way more. Far more saints are unknown than known. And that's the day that all saints are commemorated. It's a pretty big day. Yeah, for and, real. And, and it just seems like, you know, on the one hand, right, it's that thing like on the one hand, are we being tempted to want to like not look that like fundamentalists, you know, um, you know, satanic panic stuff and like, oh, okay, don't want to go too far because we're already on the edge. But 
I'm also like, well, maybe there's a need to be kind of consistent, you know, and, and if we approach everything else with this kind of like scrutiny and this kind of like measure of like, well, what are the principalities doing? You know what I mean? I, I don't know like why Halloween should get a pass. And it seems like it kind of does. That's kind of what that's kind of what I was thinking. It, it feels like it gets a pass and it just feels like, you know, there's a real temptation to not want to scrutinize it, you know? And so maybe that's a sign that there really is actually something there in, in regards of, again, the more insidious thing of what we're talking about movements of culture. Cause like I said, the heavier stuff happens on, on, at a different time of the year. You know what I mean? So I, I, I that was, I can say one thing about the principalities is I have noticed that there's a particular corner of the internet that gets very, very into Halloween. And I don't know where this is coming from. I actually, there's a sister in the church who kind of touched on this a little bit with me. And I, I keep meaning to get back with her about this because she talked uh, about this whole witches against the patriarchy thing. And they really flare up around Halloween. This whole thing about like, um, I'm on no social media except for a Tumblr I created in like 2015, I think. And um, there's a there's a particular corner in Tumblr that really gets into this whole idea that it's witchcraft that will destroy the patriarchy and finally like liberate women to like equality. And that is its own topic in and of itself. The devouring mother. That's the, the devouring, devouring mother. mother. Yeah. yeah um it's but, very real yeah we were talking about this last night in catechism we were talking about you know, you witches talk and about covens that. being the inversion of nuns and convents yeah yeah uh which is very interesting that's a very very interesting. great insight shout out to sarah from great insight um great insight uh so I, I can say, and one thing I will say as, as America becomes quote unquote, less and less Christian quote unquote, it Halloween has gotten much more popular. It's gotten much more big. Like I remember as a kid, Halloween was okay. Halloween was the predecessor. It was the predecessor to Thanksgiving, which was the predecessor to Christmas and Christmas was the big one. And, but since I've gotten older I've realized more and more people, and maybe this is just an, an awareness thing, um, but like my awareness of the situation is changing, but it seems to me more and more like it was like, no, it is getting more and more popular. Like the one that's supposed to be creepy and evil. So a couple of weeks ago, there was this AI art that someone typed in gay rights to, right? And it was this total image of a demon with a rainbow behind it and stuff like that um and everybody and like the comment section was out of control and it was like well yeah because the demons are the only one that have like gay rights like they only ha they have the gay people's back like against the christians like i'll be celebrating in hell you know with like my gay friends in hell with demons and stuff and like there's this like empowerment aspect to coming from like i'm trying not to jump too far ahead because there is stuff that that like i have for this but like there's like this whole like there's a cuteness and a kitschiness and like a funness to like embracing this stuff as like not so much as a truth but as an opposition to christianity so like demons and witches oh they aren't real but we'll embrace them We'll, we'll like use the imagery, you know, to fight against the oppressive. Well, here, well, it's, it's, it's provocative. It's trolling. It's trolling. It's trolling. But but here's the thing that's kind of, if, if I can kind of pull out something of what you're saying, Andrew, like, but that's almost, again, kind of like where we can kind of see something's going on because. That's what I'm trying to get at because I have a clip lined up um, and Cyprian, maybe I'll send you, send you the link or something because i don't know if i can share it yeah you can share it i don't see why not okay well give, i've never done it you. before uh, Here, hold, I'll, hold on i got you 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 can yeah you can do it all who can start sharing all participants right. yes yeah, you're good i think it's 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 like a uh, father it's something like that that saying the greatest trick the devil ever pulled yeah. was convincing the world he didn't exist right yeah yeah, yeah. and and okay and, 
Sorry, keep going. I just have something when you guys yeah, are. Oh, un, gosh, that un, lady, un, that un, lady alone, I feel, forgive me. Anytime Isn't I... that the Poltergeist lady? Or no? Is no. it the same lady from Poltergeist? I like her. Yeah. Um, but I, I would just say this. It isn't so much, and, and here's the thing, guys. Let me just, my my intuition, my gut on this one is that it's not so much the exaltation of, of darkness, mm. but it's, it's the provoking and the kind of exposing of those who would come against it. Does that make sense? So like, I think that's, that's kind of the real thing is it begins to highlight those who would have, a have a measure of conscience, right? Mm -hmm. Because what comes along with Halloween in America is also like the rolling of the eyes of the Christians who don't like it. That that's just mm -hmm. as much a part of the thing, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? As, as anything else, not just on a social level, but even in families, quote unquote, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. kind of, so I don't know. I just think there's something, I think there is something to that. I was low key panicking that I didn't have anything embarrassing on my computer. Yeah. So Father, uh, <laughs> I I may have missed Father. Do you not want me to play this clip? No, you can. Oh no, I'm just saying. Every time I, if that's the lady from Boulder Guys, every time I see her, I'm just like, ugh. Uh, Andrew, did you? Were you sure when you did share? Did you click the two little um things to be able to share the audio? Also, let me double check. Try unshare what? it, unshare it, and then go back to reshare. And then when it says which which screen you're going to share, be sure there's two things on the bottom. One is optimized for video clip, and one is share the sound. You're going to want to do both of those. Otherwise, we won't hear it. Oh, I see you. I see you. See you see what I'm talking about? I see you. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. The, the, what struck, what, can you guys see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What struck, what struck me was that this is a children's movie. It's Teen Witch from um, Disney. I think Disney made this movie. I, I have no mm -hmm. idea. Something like that. But it's a, but it's a kid's movie. The idea, my, my, my wife saw this movie as a kid. Um, so this is kind of what I think the real dangerous thing. And that's what father is talking about with Bishop Irene was no matter how cartoony or whatever they may be. Mm -hmm. So this is just in the middle of a movie about a teen witch and she's getting some advice from, I don't know, but you know, here's this. So I had to make people like me. You never knew how people felt. I didn't want to take the chance. So I can change it all, huh? The real magic is believing in yourself. If you can do that, you can make anything happen. Right. Okay. Self-worship. So, self-worship. The self-will, the empowerment. And like that's not even... The worst part that was me because this aforementioned patriarchy or teens against the page or witches against the patriarchy or whatever has this clip that they love where it's like magic is wanting something and allowing yourself to have it and it's like yeah. and like that's from that same movie now that might be like if like crowley could build a preschool yeah. Like that's what no that's, that's that is that is exactly right though that's a way. great that's, way of saying it yeah wow yeah yeah, yeah. 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 so this is this is this is to me what my research have found my limited limited research is the true danger as i perceive it is is this innocence you know the rights that we unknowingly give to the demons mm. that we're teaching our children from young because father was again talking about this on catechism last night if a public education system public education school system can teach a child you're nothing more than a happy accident of chemicals and you know really there is no moral value to anything blah 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 you disassemble them in that then the idea of witchcraft the idea of all of this stuff this narrative of the church against all oh, the oppressive christians against the witchcraft the witches and blah 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 magic and the oppression of like these native people oh it's well it turns out actually it's racist and misogynistic and homophobic and transphobic blah 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 
then like, it's not too hard for people to start picking up some of this stuff and be like, well, yeah, I, it does feel good for me to like, and this is like over the progression of a person's life, each step is taken more and more into like self will, it does feel good to allow myself to do these things. It does allow, it does feel good for me to follow these impulses. Let's take and then there's the people like me, uh, who like, let's take this to the next level. Like, it's not good enough for me to just like, get the promotion I want. Like, I want divine knowledge. I want like secrets. I want to see like the elves working, you know, like, you know, and all this stuff is, is portrayed as innocent. It's not a big deal. You know, oh, the soft little piano keys and stuff like that with the just believe in yourself and everything will be okay. So that's to me, the real like, the real danger that's presented by all of this, all of this stuff. So yeah, no. yeah, I, I think I think part of the problem is and it's just a matter of maturity. It's like, um, Like, I remember trying to explain things to my kids when I was really, really, you know, uh, adamant about it. And I'd always try to say, like, I understand how it feels and that, you know, same thing with, like, Harry Potter and stuff. I'm like, you have to understand that I've experienced things that I don't necessarily think that you need to experience. And what's hard to explain to them now, like, you know, the 20-year-old, the 18-year-old, you know, the 16-year-old, you know, the fortune they can if they want to hear it they can hear it but it's this reality that i'm not even talking about these explicit aspects of like you know picking up a, um you know a uh, barnes and noble special edition on crowley or something like that I, i'm talking about the way that the demons motivate and move within us on this very very subtle insidious level and that the way that it undermines gently and imperceptibly the the things of the church in regards of like your disposition, you know, humility, um, basically anything that would come against like them being spoiled and like it engender, you know what I mean? Like that's how the demons work with with if the demons work in in the human soul, especially at a young age, on those things that are about attitude and about you know kind of permissibility and not not being engaged in such a way that you can that your soul that your mind that your being is being trained to perceive and to pursue the good virtue yeah. what what the, what they do is they it's training of the of the young mind the young soul to actually pursue vice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that that's the thing. When you tell a young kid, you know, basically essentially be spoiled, right? Like people think it's not about, although if that's where we're at right now with the trans vestite, the the drag queens doing the shows with kids and sitting down and reading to kids and being in churches. I mean, that's where we're at right now. So I was going to say, it doesn't have to be explicit. Like, you know, here's how you do drugs and here's how you have sex, but it kind of, that's where we're at now though. Sure. That's where we're at in certain books, you know, librarians sneaking these things into, into libraries so kids can, you know, be conditioned and programmed. And, um, well, it's, it's subversion, right? It's and it's subversion. active, it's active subversion. And I think the question is like, I think, yeah, it's, it's, in many ways, much more about, and that's why it's demonic, really, is that it's like, it's much more about being against Christ mm -hmm. than it is about, I'm going toward the demons. I right. think that's kind of what you're bringing up there, right. uh, Andrew. And I think that that's like, that's super important, because I think that a lot of people, because because I have, I have never had the I am against Christ thing right i've only had the i am going toward the demons sure right? yeah and and it's like well and and it was never an acknowledgement of like the power of christ that christ is a person christ says i like i hadn't experienced christ 
so my experience was of what Protestants told me Christ was. And I was like, that's just a, that doesn't even exist. This guy does, there's no spiritual power. You're deluded. But I see that these demons actually exist, right? So let me just deal with something that's real. But very much in the same vein of like St. Cyprian of Antioch, having an experience of Christ, I immediately understood like, oh, this is way more powerful. You demons got to go. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. This is, this is, I'm just moving towards the thing that is the most powerful thing is what I want. As soon as I had an experience of Christ, it's like, boom. And so what's interesting there is that, and I think that very much this is St. Cyprian of Antioch, sort of a similar situation. And there's other magi and things like that, that it's a similar situation where they're like, and other shamans and things were like, oh no, they had the experience of Christ. And they're like, oh, I can easily, nope, Christ is the one. I can easily do that. But I think if what you are is you're not like these witches against the patriarchy or whatever, they're against Christ, right? So the patriarchy, ultimately, they're like the ultimate symbol of the patriarchy is going to be God the Father, right? So it's like they're against Christ. I think it's much harder to, even if you have an encounter with Christ then, I think it's much harder to then have a conversion because you're aligned against Christ specifically, mm -hmm right? As opposed to just, well, I'm just aligned to whatever is the most powerful for me. So sure. in some ways, it may actually be easier for a, like a, a Luciferian who doesn't mm -hmm. even think Christ is a real thing to become a Christian, mm -hmm. right? Than somebody who is just actively anti-Christian and Christ. But that's, that's why I think is the, the, that's like on, on, on the straight up Luciferian, I, I can see an attack on one front, but the thing about the atheist who's embracing demo so like the gay atheist, whatever, I don't know who this person is, but the gay atheist who's embracing demonic iconography, quote unquote, whatever, you know, is embracing as, as opposition, not in his mind or their mind, whoever, female, whatever, not in opposition to Christ but to Christianity, because they're not really willing to acknowledge that Christ is even real. They're talking about the, the, or, the, the institution of Christianity, their opposition, that their opposition is in a way that they are embracing what they perceive to be the anti of the Christian, or not the anti, but the, the opposition to that Christianity. So, and that's a two-pronged attack, uh, uh, two major prongs, because the Luciferian yeah, he's acknowledging, even the demons acknowledge that Christ is king, you know, like, but this person is not even acknowledging Christ as king, rather they're celebrating the enemy of Christianity. So that's like a two pronged attack right there, where it's just like, that would be two major obstacles that would have to be overcome. You know, are you guys following what I'm saying? Like, Well, I think I, I am, but I think that my experience, and this is why I say it's two sort of different things, right? And maybe maybe I'm just speaking at something that not everybody has an experience at, right? But I'm talking about two different things. So it's like, I'm talking about somebody who is like really a left-hand path practitioner, yes. right? Like somebody, that's the first person I'm talking about, who's really like Crowley, Thelema, OTO, going through these things, who's really a spiritual practitioner of the left-hand path, which includes communion with demons, Right. This person is not, they just think Christianity is just a joke. They're not in opposition to it, right? And as a matter of fact, they may use Christian symbols from time to time. If there's something of power, they may try to bring it in. They may uh, try to bring, oh, there's some saints. They'll bring in, they're happy to bring something in because to them, Christ is not, they have no, if they saw Christ and had a relationship, they would, they would want to go toward Christ, but they would try it in a left-hand pathway that wouldn't work. I mean, with right? that, that South yeah. African guy that uh... could be. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. When they have the experience, they recognize power. Right. But but we have to separate that from like the drag queen story hour. Who's just really like if that person adopts some demonic iconography or whatever, Ooh, it's it as pro either. it doesn't mean anything to them other than provocation right, they're the against most, Christ. They're that, the most dangerous. That yes. then we're all three in agreement. I think yes. I just wasn't yes. saying mine correctly because yes. yeah, yes. that's yes. the yes. that's the more powerful. That's the biggest. That's more dangerous. Yeah, 
See, but those people don't really even care about demons, is what I'm saying. No, exactly. They they are exactly. they are the icon of the demons. Yeah. Exactly. But they don't they don't care about communion with demons. No. They may not even believe demons. They don't exist. believe demons exist. Exactly. That's part exactly. of their that's part of their critique or their rebuttal or their rejection of Christianity. Like that's all. I mean, because they're fundamentally materialists, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're fundamentally materialists, so that. But they are the they are the they are the real danger and problem. It's well, because kind of they're like, actually the they're the right hand path of the demonic, actually, mm -hmm. because they're actually becoming demonic. Because the whole thing about the left hand path is it's 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 ego driven, mm -hmm. right? So even somebody who's communing, like if you're a Crowley and you're communing with these things, you don't be try to become one with them. You you maintain your distance from them, right? But these people are actually trying to be, and they are becoming the demons, aren't they? They're changing their bodies. Well, they're not trying. They're they're passive. Yeah, they're passive. there you go. Better. It's it's, yes. it's passive. Surrendered. They're surrendered. They're surrendered to it. To it. They're surrendered yes. to it. Yes. Yes. But I was gonna say the. I mean the the other thing about it is that it's a lot like we have talked about in the past. Like, um, you know, if if what happened when the apocalypse started was really overt and violent a lot of people would have not as many people would have fallen for it and more people would have been kind of awakened by it do you, do you see what i'm saying so that's why this is that's why this is the more kind of insidious because i mean the reality is is for a, a lot of people i'm one of them you know trying 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 summoning trying trying summoning and then when it finally happened it was like oh my gosh this isn't what i thought it was what this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong and then you know god uses that and it's just kind of like boop you know there's there's that begins this the the kind of stage of repentance that's one of the reasons why i think that's why i think it's really important in this context to emphasize this aspect that like and there is a level of principality that wants the worship and everything, but at the end of the day, it really does come about like if if garnering the attention, the worship alerts the human being to what's happening, it's it, the demon is much better off, and many many times demons will be more, yes. more than happy to be silent. Yes, it's fundamentally about undermining. Christ and say Maximus. That's the confessor. a big point. Wow. Say Maximus the Confessor. You know, it's like Christ dwells fully in the virtues. So when someone is approaching virtue, and this is me kind of like using Maximus and kind of expanding on it, but it's like you know, it's 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 like my little tagline, like seek wisdom, find Christ, capital W, capital, you know, um e. see, like even someone who doesn't quote unquote believe and they're actually pursuing wisdom, they'll, they'll eventually find Christ. I mean, that's what happened to me. I mean, I was invoking Solomonic concepts, you know, I, I was invoking Solomonic concepts. We'll put it that way. And the pursuit of wisdom in my most worst state god used that eventually you know what i mean because i because i truly believe that if you're actually seeking wisdom real wisdom you know um you'll find christ because there's a demonic wisdom which is sensual but that's more about the guy learning how to hook up or learning how to get the money or learning how to whatever versus like that's why a lot of people who are actually into occult knowledge not just for the sake of power but just you know maybe that curiosity you know god sometimes uses it because it's it's the kind of inversion of the pursuit of truth mm. you know what i mean um but that's i think that's important to recognize because this undermining of virtue by you know um candy coating vice that's the real that's the thing that i'm concerned with that's why i, I you know when it fundamentally i'm not worried about my kids all of a sudden, you know, worshiping bales above. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about them picking up certain things and vibing certain things. They're going to undermine the things that their mother and I have, are trying to teach them 
you know, 300 days out of the year. In subtle and insidious ways. In subtle and insidious ways, because it's fun. Yeah. It's yes. fun. And like, that's why like Disney movies are so dangerous. Yes. In particular, because it's packaged in fun and it's packaged in like, you know, it's like, well, I, and I, the in the context of Halloween, Father, what you just said is like, you know, when you're like candy coating mm -hmm. vice. Mm hmm. This is the shift in Halloween that yeah. we have seen, right? To where it's like, there are, you, well, it's very happens, difficult right? to tell. <laughs> yeah, it's very difficult to tell a woman, even one who is relatively modest, between the age of 20 and 40, that she can't wear that on Halloween or <laughs> that maybe she shouldn't, mm. right? It's, you, there, it's gonna be like, no, this is the one day of the year that I can wear this. Right. I'm going to wear this because it's okay. Right. right. And it's like, that's that candy because it's fun. It's just for fun. It's just, for fun. it's just fun. But who's asking, but who, but that's the thing is who's asking like, well, why do you want to do this? Why is it yep. fun to you? Why what? is it fun? And, and but, it's not fun, but yeah. father, that's the thing. They're actually not having fun. They're having a lot of stress about it. Mm -hmm. It's not fun for well, them, for yeah, them. Yeah, and I, and I'm sure the the outfits aren't that comfortable either. So like, what you know what I mean? What's what is the insight and in, of the intention? You know, that's the, and that I think that's where it gets insidious. Is it's like, who are you serving? What are what narrative are you playing out right now? Mm -hmm. And we like, who is this for? We even talked about in the music episode, um, however long ago that was, uh, where we talked about like you know, someone wearing like a pentagram on the converse or whatever, um, or has like some kind of crazy, uh, I don't know, like blasphemous image on their t band t-shirt or something like that. Like the demons don't care if you know what that is. Like they don't care. That's why Ouija boards are so dangerous. And I mean, like, let's not even talk about the amount of people that experiment with Ouija boards on Halloween. You know, like the like the middle schoolers that haven't quite got fentanyl yet. Well, just can like, I say something? I just I, I don't want to lose this. Forgive me. I, I just want to talk about middle schoolers doing fentanyl real quick. Forgive me. I, I don't want to lose this. Um, I just had this kind of realization about something too, which is um, this whole thing about them not caring because I think people get stuck up on like the day of itself. So, if, so it's like Sam Hain and you know, druidism and blah, 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 and all this stuff. I just, the demons don't really care in that sense. So it's irrelevant whether it was developed to be this time of whatever pagan ritual is. It's kind of, it really, it's kind of irrelevant and it's irrelevant really. Um, it, it almost serves the purpose more if it is developed by um advertising agents to sell products yeah because that's know. almost even more advantageous that's oh, even yeah. worse that that's it's, even it, worse. it's worse it's worse if it's about you know procter and gamble and hallmark you know kind of coming in and be like this is a great opportunity for us to sell cheap products and you know let's let's have halloween pop-up stores and this and that like that's actually much more advantageous. I mean, that's where you start really getting into principalities and powers on the real level. That's what I'm, yeah. I mean, so, and stepping back just for like one second, because I had this thought earlier, but like, what spirit are you like, what spirit are you following that like, even in my, getting back to, and I won't take forever on this, but like, I know one of the reasons why I really liked black metal and what I really, really liked, like, for instance, there's a certain band that, you know, um, dresses up as like an inverted pope and, you know, sings for all those who know what I'm talking about, you know, what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, and uh, one of the things I liked about them was that spirit of rebelliousness, was that spirit and like that spirit at the time, even into my catechism, I was really into and um I remember uh, there was a documentary on black metal, um, uh, a light in the, I can't yeah. remember what. The light, the light takes us. Until the light takes us. Yeah. Thank you. Or what's his nuts? 
uh, Varg Vigerson from yeah. Burzum is talking Burzum. about what's that? Burzum. Yeah, from Burzum. He's talking about how they burned down one of those churches because they had built it on top of a pagan, like, like pagan, like a pagan worship site. And at the time, I was like, well, yeah, who wouldn't be mad about that? These Christians coming in and like, I had no concept of principalities at that point. Like they did that to cleanse that land of that pagan worship. Like they built the church to like retake that area for God, like those Christians. And I would be, I would be cringing five, maybe even four, three years ago about what I'm saying. Now it's like, no, they did the right thing. Mm -hmm. Like they, 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 they are blessing an area, which was current, which used to be in service of the devil. Repentance is something else, ain't it? <laughs> it's, it's incredible. And, George Orwell says that a good book only just tells you what you already know. Mm -hmm. And like, I already knew that, like I knew that somewhere inside of me and like repentance is what brought that out. Like sometimes repentance is not always brutal. Sometimes it's like sliding into like a warm sleeping bag. It's like, I've known this all along. Well, like, but I, I think, I think Andrew, I think the repentance father is talking about it. And I don't want to gloss over it is the building of the church was the repentance. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So it was the repentance of the people. So I think that the miss and this is this and it's not just there. Right. Like this has happened in South America and all of these things. I think one of the things that has been like that people don't understand is like who built it and under what auspices. Right. Most of the time these like this and this includes like the mission churches in California. Right. Where they would say the bands of mission Indians. Those were converts. Mm -hmm. Right. And it wasn't that it was under like this, some terrible yoke and these people were being whipped Duress. like the, no, these were people who converted, right. Who converted and then were like, oh, wow. We realize we've been blowing it. This is where we've been worshiping. OK, well, we need to be worshiping Christ as we're as we've removed the pagan stuff from our heart. Yeah. Now we need to remove it from the land. It wasn't like some Christian call. I mean, of course, there was the state that came in afterwards. But people got to realize that, like, you know, missionary work is has mission as missionary work always has been like, you know, priests would go in and get killed. They yeah. weren't there with guns. You know what I mean? So if people converted, there was no way that they were converted under duress. Right. Right. Because it's like there was no duress to be given. And that's the danger of the materialism uh, mm -hmm. to wrap up because I want to be done talking. But the materialism is that like I only saw that from a materialist sense of like oppressing the native. Mm -hmm. the power of the victim. It's the power of the victim. It's the exactly. spell. It's the spell of the victim. And that spell is so rampant. Now. It's antichrist. And that's yeah. how, that's how, I mean, I've been on this lately. It's just like, man, I just, my heart's so broken because I'm realizing like, this is a moment for me, but I'm thinking God's got to do something here because I, I'm realizing, I'm looking around like, man, you know, people are really crystallizing in like whatever the thing is like like blm let's just say they're really crystallizing in it to where it's just kind of like it doesn't matter how much is revealed doesn't matter how much is shown does it doesn't matter if you show them the fraud doesn't matter if you show them how like it's done more harm for black people than anything else they the just could be raised right in front of them they're just so crystallized in it and i'm just like man if i could just get 10 minutes with kanye I just, <laughs> you know what I mean? I like, I like, Lord, uh, open the door because it, because this, this thing of repentance on, on this, on a larger scale, on a, I mean, I'm so concerned with that. I'm so concerned with that because unless that happens, there's, I don't want to say there's no hope, but like, Huh, you know, it, it's really tough because we have faith and we trust that God, you know, will, 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 God will preserve us, meaning like us and our children, you know what I mean? But there's this portion where you begin to realize that like the culture your children are living in matters. Yeah, you know I mean, that's why we have to have schools. And don't worry, I'm going somewhere with this because like, what are you talking about? We're talking about Halloween. Like, 
the level of repentance from these, you know, errors, they matter. Because what's going to happen is if things don't begin to change, again, I'm just using this as a small micro because everyone can kind of understand that. Like, like the BLM thing, right? Like, it's just a complete falsehood. I mean, it's it's like it's it's literally objective. It's like you can just show data. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. On top of anecdotal evidence that right. But as long as people keep doubling down on it, what's going to happen is that's going to develop some facet of culture for African Americans and for white liberal kids in college, and that is going to call if you know unless the lord tarries that's going to have some kind of weird effect and and cause a really bad distortion are you following what i'm saying yes. at the very least it's going to impede the ability to repent further yeah right? because it's just it's just more of a tumor kind of like growing to the point to where like the the ability to kind of like keep the ability to save the patient and and excise the tumor becomes almost not possible. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's where nations and cultures really begin to like, you know, the Aztecs. That's where like that's where the judgment begins to come. And we read them in history books like, oh, well, it's just an accident of history, evolution, but it's God's judgment yes. on a nation. Yes. On a people. Does anything I'm saying make sense? You understand oh, what I'm saying? Awesome. No, yeah, absolutely. You, ha you have to go to, I mean, if you want the tumor excised, you have to go to the surgeon. You have to go to, to and, and part of that is you also have to, it's like repentance is the prerequisite. And I think people don't understand that, like, in even in that materialist example, you've got to say, me sitting in this bed saying, I'm a victim of this tumor is is never i have to admit that like that's not correct if i did that yesterday i have to stop doing that right. i have to actually get up and go to the surgeon yeah. who's going to remove this right. like i actually have to do that and i have to say that the previous action that i took was not healthy because i woke up the next day and the tumor was bigger mm -hmm. and and i think that this is what because i'm seeing it also father and it's it's one of those it, and like you say, it doesn't matter how much because, and I've been saying this for a while, but it's like now being orthodox, now I understand the importance of it is like, who's going to say I was wrong? Mm -hmm. Lord, help me. Mm -hmm. Have mercy on me. I was wrong. Mm -hmm. This, that statement, even when people it's brought up to like... It, and it's gotten to the point of absurdity, right? To even where you're seeing it at the highest levels where like White House press conference, you know, they brought in somebody who can actually sit there with the straight and they're like, well, you said this before and it was wrong. Well, no, we didn't say that. Uh, that was never said. And it's like, wait, here's the actually you saying it. Yeah. Right? Nope, nope, never said, never said. And it's like, oh, well, that just means hell is on the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that's the recipe Hell's for bringing way. hell on earth. Hell's on the way. Hell's on the way, and it's on. It hell's on the way, and and all of these, all of these things which seem so insignificant in themselves, and maybe they are is one thing. But when you begin to tally them up, you begin to see these little chipping away at Christ and culture you know, Christ, you know, in regards of the pursuit of virtue, like all those things chipping away, it's like, Lord have mercy, you know, because it makes repentance seemingly impossible. Mm. Well, is, I mean, isn't that the prerequisite? Isn't the prerequisite to say I was wrong? Mm -hmm. I mean, can repentance even happen if that's, if that's, mm -hmm. it can't, right? And that's why someone may be thinking how we get here, but I just want to throw this out there to remind everyone because we brought the victim the power of the victim and the power of the victim is you know something that you see i mean it, it's one heck of a spell yeah it is one heck of a spell it's like i i mean i've seen a thing recently where someone's like you know they're clearly wrong on something like before god they're wrong on something but 
you know, it's just it very easy to be like, you know, I'm a victim, I'm scared, or I'm this, or I'm that, and it's just like the, your fear is leading you to hell. Like fear is a passion, and people don't even recognize, but they can allow fear to um, justify and to validate their inability to to repent. So in other words, Father, is there any context you can give to that scenario that you're talking about? Yeah, I mean, I mean, look, you know, um, I won't say this particular scenario. I'll just say like in general, um, feminism, let's say feminism. We can talk about feminism. We can talk about whatever form of idolatry because feminism is idolatry. Um, racism is idolatry, whether it's, you know, um, on both sides. On both sides, it's all idolatry, and it and it happens on both sides, right? It, it's it's all it's all idolatry, but someone can say like, you know, fourteen words. I got to preserve a, a homeland for my white children, whatever. Like that fear is what motivates you to do whatever. Or someone can say, I'm scared of being whatever because you know of the microaggression, microaggression from white people who don't understand what I've been through, right? So that fear is gonna allow me to really do and become what I'm complaining about. Mm -hmm. and so, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you um, can never be, you can also never be wrong. In you your can never actions. be wrong, that's my point. That's my whole yeah. point. You yeah. can never be yeah. wrong because someone says, well, aren't you really just trying to avoid someone challenge you on your opinion? No, it's yeah. fear. I, I'm not comfortable, blah, blah, blah. It's like, Okay. And now, and now by you saying that, like, aren't you, then it's like, no, you're minimizing you're my right. struggle. And therefore that's violence against that's me. Right. And you are by minimizing my struggle, you are encouraging violence against me. And therefore it's, so then I can that's never right. be wrong. That's so, right. which, it, so if I can never even admit to myself that I'm wrong, that's the real spell. I think father mm -hmm. is that when you become that person, you can never even admit to yourself mm -mm. that you're wrong. And if you can never even admit, admit to yourself that you're wrong, there's no repentance and then there's no salvation. And what's crazy, not only is there no salvation, I mean. And it's miserable. Full stop. There's no salvation. Like, let's just go there real quick. Salvation. Because really, like, that's the key thing. Salvation. That I mean, that's why any of this matters. Because how do you turn towards the original intent of what God wanted for us. That's what salvation is, right? And so whenever we take something that in theory should be given to us to help, like pain is there to help us to repent. I mean, that's, forgive take me. Take your hand off the stove. Yeah, take your like, hand off the, out of the fire. Yeah, <laughs> like it literally, that's what it's there for. And when someone just doubles down, it's just like, Lord have mercy. That's so scary, right? Because you're actually, you're just doing exactly what the demons want. You know what I mean? You're just, and that's, that's why people don't really get it. It's like people who struggle with this idea of, of hell and those who are like, no, you know, eventually this and that. I go like, if you've ever really known people and you see how people do this and how they double down and they just, drill down and just compound upon compound once you've seen it enough times and you've seen some people leave your life because they just they're doubling down you know hell's real and you know that hell very much has any the the potential for hell to be eternal is like it's if you're if you live the spiritual life if you've seen it you know that it's possible it's by its nature it's I, I i wonder i wonder father this is it's so interesting. I wonder if um, it is easier to have a conversion if you are a naturally disagreeable person because of this exact thing that you're talking about. So for me, like I've done like a temperament test and all of these, like the big five personality tests, I am the of the most disagreeable temperament that you could possibly be hmm. like 1% agreeable. I think, and, I think we've actually talked about this before. Right. And, and it's the this thing that you're talking about with pain, right? Because definitely what was part of my conversion was pain, mm -hmm. was understanding like this road that I'm pursuing is filled with pain and mm -hmm. I want this to stop. It's not working what I'm doing. I need to stop because of pain. Because I'm so disagreeable, 
it never occurred to me to try to like ask somebody, why am I feeling this pain? Like that never occurred to me because I was like, I wouldn't believe them because they haven't lived my life. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I see and like, it seems to be the trap in this, like what we're talking about this thing, right? Which we could call it woke, whatever. I don't know what it is, but it's this thing, right? And I think people who watch this know. One of the things that I see about people who get caught up in this thing is at some point, somebody tells them why they're in pain and they believe it. Mm -hmm. Right. You're in pain because of the patriarchy. You're in pain because of oh, white supremacy. It's like the you're whole in, thing. Yeah. It's the whole thing, right? Yes. You're in pain because of this, this, this. Now they believe it. And then they, it's not a matter of this is going to alleviate the pain. As a matter of fact, the narrative says that this pain will always be there. Mm -hmm. It will never go away until this thing, the patriarchy, white supremacy goes away. But for me, I was like, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want the pain to go away. Mm -hmm. So don't give me some story about the pain will never go away, but here's who's to blame for it. Mm -hmm. I want it to go away. And I think people who are naturally disagreeable will do that. And that's why I think people who are naturally disagreeable will probably find Christ if they keep going. Well, let me throw something out at you. What we just described is so antichrist. Because what is the cross? Pain. Pain, <laughs> suffering. What is yes. what is the suffering. way of salvation? Pain. Yes, yes. Right. Yes, but do yes. you do you see? Because that's the again it's the, anti it's an anti-pain. It's the anti it's it's, it's an anti-pain. And the the victim, right? Remember this whole thing with the part of the victim, it's the antichrist in the place of. You get to be the victim. Right. Father, we need right. to sit down and we need to do a chart of all the parts of salvation that are now anti because there's now anti tears. Mm -hmm. There's like anti pain. Mm -hmm. There's anti salvation. Mm -hmm. There's like anti humanness. Like there, anti because because he's coming. Because antichrist is coming. Exactly. Because he's coming. Exactly. Yeah. He's coming because it, the system is first of all. I mean, I, it's fair to say it's complete. All these things are just being the the the, the traps are already there. We're just we're just watching them, you know, be tripped, you know, sometimes multiple at a time. So the Christ is 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 I have to ask a question that's way off base, but I'm going to ask it and it might lead to a wormhole or a rabbit hole or a wormhole, um, depending on where this goes. But is the Antichrist going to know he's the Antichrist? Like, is he self? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I don't know. I can't answer that because that's I okay. know. I know the fathers talk about it uh, to some degree, um, and there's that great there's a great article we can put in the link on. Uh, it's kind of like a um, buffet of the patristic teachings on the Antichrist, but uh, I mean the Antichrist is gonna the Antichrist is gonna be aware insofar as for sure like being opposed to God. Does that okay. make sense? Like, it's kind of like, I don't know. I don't know if Hitler goes like, hey, I'm Hitler. Does that make sense? Sure, like, sure. So I, I don't think it's like that. You know what I mean? Um, But, you know, there's plenty of other things we know, like he, he will be gay and all this other stuff, you know. Sure. But the, con the conscious opposition to God. Yes. But, He's not but, gonna like but, it may, but it may not be displayed publicly, right? No, like it will because... be. no, it will be. Oh, it will be. That, okay. That's the whole thing. Okay. It will be. Okay. And, okay. and and it'll be done in such a way. I mean, we're already there. Like, look, man. Um, we're, we're our, I mean, I this I don't want this is about as partisan as you'll hear me, you'll hear me, you will hear me get in some some degree, but like Joe Biden and, and Nancy Pelosi. What kind of good upstanding Catholic can actually you know what I mean? Like, the only thing left is for them to publicly perform some defilement of the sacrament with some, you know what I mean, in public. I, I don't know what it takes for, you know, the normal Catholic person to be like, well, oh, blah, blah, blah. You see what I'm saying? Like, we're at a point where thing, we literally can't even say that men are men and women are women without someone losing their mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, that's not the whole like, well, 
every generation thinks that the younger generation is bad. It's like, no, this is objectively different. The, the, the teetering on madness that we are, that we've been just talking about, it's, it's, it's real. So that, to, all that being said, let's just, let's just run through a scenario, right? We can do it, right? Let's just say you get in three weeks, three to four dirty bombs going off in Europe and one in one in the States. Let's just say that happens, right? Well, a dirty bomb's enough to where the, the, the damage will be significant for sure. But it's not like worldwide Armageddon significant. But the perception, it might, it might as well be. Yes, yes. That's all that matters is the perception. You, you set off, a, you set up the right kind of dirty bomb. Let's say, in the Lower East Side in New York, you still got portions of the Eastern Seaboard that will function. You know what I mean? The whole thing, whatever. But like, point being is, the perception is there, and who isn't gonna want, you know someone to to rise up and be like this is madness stop and they'll clamor for it they'll and then when they it. see the people when the people see the powers and the authorities actually listening right listen people are going to want it and this is why things like the prologue like you can't let those things go because every single one of us has the potential for natural fear that's there isn't a sin in natural fear that's what the fathers call um a natural passion it becomes an unnatural passion when that fear be goes beyond rationality and it, and it becomes the means by which you're trying to save yourself at any cost toilet that's paper happened. that's what happened in covid toilet right? paper yeah toilet paper right but but in particular that's what happened in covid and the reason why i bring that up is when people began to do the unthinkable with the Holy Eucharist and other things, right? That that revealed the, the passion of fear as opposed to just like, well, we just want to keep safe. It's like, no, 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 no. We, we, we start doing irrational things, right? There's there's a spirit, there's a passion, right? You haven't been over to a spirit of fear, but a spirit of adoption, which you cry, Abba, Father. The Antichrist is the spirit of fear. Christ gives a spirit of comfort, of courage, you know, it's the, the fruits of the spirit, gentleness, joy, peace, love, right? Antichrist brings fear, suspicion, um, aggression, um, you know, the need to control, cunning, you know, the, the assumption of what one thinks. Cunning's a big thing, right? I I know, I know what they're doing. I know what that guy's thinking, right? I know that white person's thinking. He's just looking at me. I know that they're they're, they're all looking at me, right? Well, I know that black person could look like that. Like the cunning is a real thing, and it begins to build on a social level, families, communities, right? States. You can you start people start having this kind of shared logis me, the shared the shared temptation of thought that begins to shape and condition their cultural experience. So. When you have a event that can kick that into hyperdrive for people on a mass scale, then you're primed. You're primed for someone to come up and to say, hey, I got some answers. Like when, when, I mean, I've never in my lifetime seen it so clear. Like people are like not only ready, they're wanting it now. We haven't even had something catastrophic yeah. like that happen. People are so just tired of being scared in general about something that hasn't even happened yet. God forbid you actually get some real tragedy. But you know, Ukraine's like, that's a real thing, whatever. But like, it's enough for people to kind of be like, oh, okay. You know, especially for us Americans, we've been, everyone listening here has been in war. Yep. If you can hear my voice, you've been living in a time of the country where we've been at war. There hasn't 20, been, 20 years, 20 plus more to, because the nineties, yeah. the nineties. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, we become desensitized to certain things, which mm -hmm. is part of, which is forgiving. That's part of the movement too, mm -hmm. because that's mm -hmm. why you need to have the perception. You need to have the perception dialed up a little, a little bit, you know what yeah. I mean? 
for all the for all the folks that function at my capacity, which maybe some of that stuff went over their head. It's like in Winter Soldier, the Captain America movie, that Hydra grew in the belly of S.H.I.E.L.D. and looked to create conditions of chaos in which Hydra could take over and no one would be opposed to it. Because like the whole thing was like, no, we need to eliminate these targets. Um, just, you know, we'll make the sacrifice of the one eighth of the population or whatever, whatever it was, I can't remember. And then we'll have long lasting peace under the force of rule. Like, you know, I'm just saying for all those that operate like that problem, problem, reaction, solution. Yep. So yeah. They're like, here's the, here's the solution. Here's how we bring it in. I think father, you know, it's, I can only imagine what it's like there in the mainland. And I don't want to imagine what it's like in like a major metropolitan area anywhere in the West right now. But at least looking from the outside in, if I turn everything off and just go around, it's not nothing like that in Saipan. But looking from the outside in, the pitch to which people are wound up, such an event as you're describing seems to me inevitable within like a month, month's time frame. It, it would... It, it would it can't Sorry, keep going on like this. It can't mm-hmm. keep going on like there. It's like, you know, again, it's that perception. Um, I can't think of a good analogy, but it, it's like that perception of of crisis after crisis after crisis. Twenty twenty, George Floyd. You know, then we've got this like Ukraine thing. Then we've got what all the different things that I'm missing in there. All these different crisis after crisis after crisis, and then it's just the matrix that people jack themselves into is giving them nothing but panic and fear and panic and fear and panic and fear. And, you know, so, you know, I think we talked, we talked in one episode about the feeling before, if anybody's been in a a riot, the feeling before the riot happens, that's what it feels like right now. Before the catalyst happens where the riot begins. Yeah. Very much what it, which is, and it's a different feeling because it feels like a bit of a, if, if you, came if you didn't have the background you would feel like we're in a bit of a lull right now you know a bit of a lull but it's it but it's like this pressure cooker it's the pressure of, you know what i mean yeah. the pressure is so much right now mm-hmm. yeah yeah seems inevitable it seems inevitable Could but be. hopefully 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 god will i pray it still could it still could be averted yeah, it, I mean, it still it, could be averted. It, 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 it could be averted, and that's why to kind of bring it back to one like the middle section of, of the talk tonight was repentance. Yeah, he, if we actually repent, God will, God will hear that repentance. He'll give Nineveh. us. He'll give us Nineveh, more, Nineveh, 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 right? He'll yeah. give us more time. Mm-hmm. He'll give us more time. I was talking to a sister the other day. I was just like super frustrated with like everything. I was like, ugh. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. And she's like, no, Father, we need more time. We need more time. I was like, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Okay, you're right. We need more time. We're not ready. We need, we, and you know, I'm like, yeah, God help us. We, I mean, we yeah, need you need more time. We need to, we need more time to repent because, you know, we, well, we should, we should pray and we should repent that God would grant us more time to repent and to actually be ready because i think like you know the the reality is is there's so much i see so many good people still i see well i see so many people that are willing to repent there's no one good no not one i (laughs) see so many people that are actually wanting to repent um but they're weak you know what I mean? I, I just have to thank yeah. God. God, God knows and sees. So, God have mercy on us, so that we can actually repent. You know, let us not be taken in the day, in the, in the evil day of doing. You know. Yeah, Father, you told me that in confession a long time ago. But I was talking about I was confessing during early recovery. <sighs> confessing, I was praying for death, not praying for death, but I was like, I'm just, I'm ready. I'm ready. Just take me. I don't want to do this anymore. I can't, I can't do this anymore. This is too hard. And then you're like, yeah, you're not ready though. Like you're not ready yet. Like, you know, and I'm like, yeah, whatever, you know, like in my mind, I'm like, yeah, I mean, come on. I've, I've done it. I've been here. I put in the work, you know, but it's like, now I'm so happy. I, that didn't happen. Cause now I've, I've got a, a 180 of a life, yeah. you know, instead of 
farting in, in my own pillow fort and eating Taco Bell, you know, in early recovery, because that's about all I could do is just hang out underneath my covers in my bed, eating Taco Bell and watching The Office. Now I'm like actually like a man and can actually go work a job and pay bills and own a home and take care of children. And those are all like things that, you know, it's essential to my salvation. It's essential to my repentance because I'm not sitting there thinking I'm all high and mighty and I don't have a problem with sugar when I'm dealing with my son at 430 in the morning when he's crying and won't go back to bed. You know, I'm sitting there being like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I just don't know how I'm going to do this. I just don't know how. So. Um, all right. So I have a question for you, Father. This is a question I am going to. Uh, OK, I'm trying to figure out where to cut because this is a long one. Um, short version of question. Father, are you familiar with ASMR? The sound things? Yeah. Uh-huh. So this is from John Paul. John Paul. Um especially audio uh, role plays, demonic, dangerous, need case-by-case -case discernment are mostly harmless in my pre-Orthodox life and strict lockdown. I discovered the crazier ones and felt in my case like it helped cultivate a love for certain kind of violence, which led back to de demonic iconography. Uh, long before I was in, some of the fathers call it and then learned about Kabbalah. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, I never got to the spells or anything, but I had a dream involving a weird vampire attack. Um... So I found uh, most intense vampire content I could find, found some of the form of ASMR role plays. Most uh, th there's hypnotic elements and craziness. Um, so I think that that's the generality of the question. Um, so these father, did, do you need me to go through that again? I know I wasn't terribly vague, but it seemed like you kind of knew what I was talking about a little bit. Do you want me bit. to go over? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, basically i'm not familiar at all with what this is i don't know at all what this is i know asmr but i've never been into it that's not really my thing at all me, me either i don't get it i mean i what i do i get to not do it to not participate in it i got that very early right yeah like, so i was like oh this is not <laughs> I don't in 2020 when i first began to like really repent of some stuff um, to the degree that I could, I saw a video of a uh, of a some young woman with a mic up to her throat, and she's eating like this huge hamburger. And her cat came and like knocked over the mic, and it was supposed to be like a funny video. I'm like, what is that? Like, what is that? What is this? And that led me to like probably the first of many times I said this wicked and perverse generation. Like, I want nothing to do with this. So, um. So let me just give a, I guess the best way for me to answer that in a way that's not going to get too salacious is if we just understand something and it's, it's about something being disordered and disordering an intentional disordering is, is dangerous, you know, and intentional disordering can lead to um putting emphasis on certain aspects of being and existence um and then like that disordering then becomes a kind of like marking of a doorway it's like here's a doorway right um let me explain this in a different way so someone can kind of understand like in certain oh gosh it's just hard i don't want to get it i don't want to start talking about like rituals but like you, if you mark something a certain way, right, you could just even think about that as the gas man. The gas man comes, he sprays symbols on the sidewalk that you have no idea what he's talking, what, what those symbols sure. are, but he knows what it means. And that's where they can like drill and not strike pipe and do whatever they want. But, you, sure. but it's there to communicate where there's an entry point. Oh. Okay. Okay. So sigils work like this, things like like work like this. And if you begin to understand certain things like certain, so these are the gates. And I don't want to talk too much about our mysteries and what we do, but just understand these are the gates. The eyes, the senses, they are the gates. And if I was talking about the gates and these are things are anointed and these are things that are blessed 
against demonic intrusion, right? So these are gates. Mm. And so a disordered emphasis on a phenomena is like marking a gate. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> That's really interesting. Well, the, the, I think that the the thing for me that always that that tripped me out about the a ASMR stuff, and this I think this makes sense in the context of the gates here, is the I, I think the important thing about ASMR is that it's actually something that you're because there's a there's a the whole thing about it is there's a level of intimacy, and it it's almost audio voyeurism, so it's like uh, any uh, anything that. It is that's audio awesome. voyeurism. That's what it is. So anything that you're hearing in ASMR, the whole thing about it is, and that's thus the whispering and everything, is that you're not supposed to be hearing this. It's too close to to another individual, another individual. So what you're actually doing is you're participating in this this. Yeah, it's you can't call it voyeurism because voyeurism means looking, but it's like you're you're in violation, mm -hmm. like you're violating the it's personal violating. space. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's rather, but, it, but it's disordered. It's disor and it's disordered yeah, in Father, that way, right? Because it's against right. the rules. Right. You're not you, supposed to be here. Father, could you right? could you explain a little bit? Like, I got everything that you said, other than the disorder. Like, what is out of order? Like, like I, I understand the entry point and everything, but like, it something. Yeah. So, so you if you begin be to use speaking. your body, if you begin to use certain parts of your body that weren't intended to be used that way that's a disordering oh okay all right that's what the demons are all about is a disordering okay because the logos is order so the logos orders creation so if you begin to disorder creation that's a affront to the logos uh -huh. right. okay right. so if, you begin to, if you begin to get people to have sexual uh phenomena and arousal around things that shouldn't be it's a disordering yes Hmm. I would say there's no so so I guess what I would say and I and this is this is my thought on it and my feeling about the ASMR I don't think there it that the ASMR I don't think the content matters right like I don't think it matters that it's somebody chewing chips or that it's something overtly sexual I think and no matter it's like the medium is the message mm -hmm. that like it's all disordered the nature of it is just, because you could because it's something that you couldn't do without this medium right without this medium with the microphones and all of this without you know yeah. the streaming and the headphones you could not actually hear those sounds like or unless you were in somebody else's business basically unless you were right up next to something that you're not supposed that that you ostensibly aren't there you would never hear these things Ugh. You and understand what like, I'm saying? Yeah, that's like a person doing that. Millions of people are like involved. Thank you. Now, yeah. you, now you're seeing. Now you're seeing what like the yeah. the, the the vision of how like perverse. It's gross. It's gross. Yeah. It's super gross. Yeah, I can't. I can't. There's a spectacle to it, and again, like, yes, spectacle. Exactly. You yeah. know, that's like one of my number one heebie-jeebies is like hearing mouth sounds. Like yes. there's well, that's the point. Yeah, that's the that's, point. There's whole podcast I can't listen to because people like have like a dry mouth, dry mouth. <laughs> or they have like like a pocket of spit in the corner of their mouth. Yes, I yes, can yes. hear it like on the inside of their lip. I can't do it. Like I can't hear, mm -hmm. some, I can't stand hearing somebody swallow. I can't hear mm -hmm. like people chewing. Like my four-year-old daughter, God love her. She chews with her mouth open like all. And I like, sometimes it keeps like everything I have just from like Ralphing right next to her. Just being like, dude, you need to stop that. So well, all, all of that is about an intimacy. Yeah. Right. All, all of that is about an intimacy with somebody else's bodily fluids, basically, for the most part, is what you're reacting to, right? Things that are inside that are not supposed to be outside. And that's the disorder, right? Like it's the what is inside is not supposed to be outside. Like I shouldn't be hearing you chew. I should only hear myself chew. Father, are you sure it's wrong to say? Let's just take all these people and put them on an island and nuke it. Are you sure that that's wrong? I mean, no, I'm just kidding. Of course it's wrong. I pray for their repentance. I, I pray for their repentance. Actually, I I don't know. It's late, whatever. I don't care. Um, 
I was talking with a couple, uh, a couple brothers from the church and I said something and I'm not really sure how I felt about it until a little bit later, but I was talking about the undermining orthodoxy in America documentary father. Mm -hmm. And I was talking about some of the people and I was kind of sharing. And it was one of those moments where like I was with a group of people and it kind of all got quiet. So the last part of my sentence got heard, but like not the first part, but I was talking to him and I was like, I was talking about like, I felt like I needed to take a shower after a half hour of watching this thing. Mm-hmm. I was like, I pray for their repentance, but if any of those dudes get hit by a bus tomorrow, I'm not crying about it. And like, that was the part that everybody heard. And I was just like, and someone was like, that's pretty messed up, dude. I was like, I mean, I pray for their repentance. And if they do get hit by that bus, I'm praying for their soul. I'm absolutely, but it's like, you know, it's one of those things of like, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I'm not shedding any tears over that. It's like, you know, I'm probably being a little bit too hard hearted about it. I know I am. But at the same time, it's like, I mean, enemies of orthodoxy, enemies of Christ, the undermining of the Christian church, blah, blah, blah. Anyway. Um, so and then the last thing I wanted to ask, Father, is there's like light ones of those of those like I wouldn't call them anything close to ASMR videos. I'm pretty selective about which ones I do, but it's like um, you're walking through like uh, the woods, you know, and so they'll have like a picture of like autumn woods or something like that with like leaves falling. And then there'll be like leaves crunching and like the wind, you know what I mean? And I just have that on in the background. And I kind of mentioned it to a brother from the church. And he's like, Ooh, sounds like a spell. You know what I mean? Like, is that kind of dangerous? Like, um, I don't do any of the ones where like you're hanging out in, like a witch's cabin because there's a lot of those. Really? Oh man, there's a that's right with like with like a cauldron bubbling. Oh and, like, yeah, and then probably so like low key someone whispering spells or something. Of course, like. of course. Yeah. I that's I don't know that to be true. That's, that's pretty speculation. That's but I looked for autumn themed ones because I work in an office and I have a giant TV in there, and a lot of times I'll just put something on that I don't have to think about. You know what I mean? Well, is they also something... have those fire videos where the there's a fire and the fire's crackling. Sure. And it's it, like, and yeah. There, yeah, there's like little like, you know, you're standing I, in. I think I just want to say. That seems Background different. noise, ambience um, noise is not the same as ASMR stuff. It's, so that's kind of, yeah. Fact, it's just not the same. It's okay. okay. It's not the same. Okay. Yeah, because there's ones that's like you're in Times Square in 1890. Listen, we that's have right. one that has waves that we the wife puts on for the kids okay yeah you know what i mean like oh the ocean oh. like eh, that's kind of how i felt about it but i wasn't sure because it's not the same i'm ignorant on a lot of things um well gentlemen that is we're coming up on two hours um so i don't think we have any big announcements um i think father and cyprian did a talk uh did an episode with uh john hears what's the name of his channel uh, i don't know why are we talking about rabbits? Something like that. Oh, okay. That's yeah. the name of his podcast, and then he has like also the first things. Foundation. First, th- first things, yeah. First, I think, I think for it's first things on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. But the well, podcast is why are we talking about rabbits? Yeah. Well, we're um. So, from what I understand, that that was that was a good talk. Um. Uh. Then we have the Royal Path music playlist. And expect some Chelsea Wolf on there. Um, I'm kind of shocked again that she's not on there already. We've made it a whole year without talking about her. Um, and then we have our store, Royal Path dot store. Yep, got it, got it in one. And please keep the questions coming. Um, Andrew at Royal Path dot network. Yep, network network. network. Andrew at Royal Path dot network is your way to send us a question. Uh, we're working our way through, um, and I really, really like them. Again, this is an interesting one this week. I'm really glad that we got to talk about that stuff. Got a little bit of insight into ASMR. I'm glad I never got into it because it's creepy and gross. Um, and then, uh, uh, yeah, please send in your questions. There's some really, really good ones. We're really happy with those. Um, and then I think I've got to everyone who asked for Father's contact details. If you still are desiring to get in contact with Father, uh, contact me, and then I will send Father's details out to you. Um, Shout out to people who work with water. You know who you are. 
<laughs> okay. All right. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to trust. I'm not supposed to know what that means. Um, and then I think that's it. I think that's it. So if nothing else, thank you gentlemen. And thank you for having a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.